I'm Scott. And I'm Melissa. And we are the Sunshine Travelers. Our passion is travel and sharing our experiences with those who enjoy it as much as we do, want to learn more about travel, or even those that just want to live vicariously through our travel stories. No matter where you fall along that journey, get ready to hear about our firsthand experiences as we visit some of the most amazing places on earth. Today, we thought it would be a good idea to take a step back and introduce ourselves as the host of this podcast. Learn about how we started with our travel adventures, where it has taken us, and what is next as we truly embrace our passion for travel. So pack your bag and journey back to the beginning as you learn more about us as your host. It seems kind of strange to do an introduction several episodes in on a podcast. I guess we were just eager to get started and had some great content we wanted to lead off with. Yeah, and this is something that we've been discussing for a long time, and we were gearing up for our big bucket list trip to the Galapagos. We had originally wanted to record some of that content while we were on the trip, but it just didn't work out the way that we had planned. But here we are, and there's no better time than the present to do a little introduction. We are Scott and Melissa Barrington, and we live in the Sunshine State of Florida, hence the name Sunshine Travelers. We've lived here for almost a year now, uh, but we spent most of the rest of our lives near Atlanta, Georgia. Anyone who knows travel has made a trip or two through Hartsville-Jackson Airport, the busiest airport in the world. And that is exactly where my travel journeys began. Growing up, my mom worked for the airlines, and we could hop on a plane and go almost anywhere in the world. At the spur of the moment, we'd pack a bag, head to the airport, and then decide where we wanted to go. We had one limitation, which flights were available. If we had the wrong clothes, no big deal. We'd take care of that when we got there. I wouldn't say travel was a passion for me back then, but it took me to some really cool places and left me yearning for others. As a child, we attempted several times to go to Hawaii. Uh, My parents and brother had been before, and I heard all of their stories. Unfortunately for me, every time we tried uh, to go, we would always get bumped because we were flying uh, standby non-rev, and we would get bumped in California. Melissa thought I was crazy because I didn't like Disneyland when we first got married. That was because, for me, it was a consolation prize for not getting to go to Hawaii. I know, that's totally a first world problem. But fast forward to today, and we both really enjoy Disney, And you're going to be hearing more about uh, that as we travel there frequently with our children and grandchildren. So how about you, Melissa? So Scott, I think we also need to add that we have a running joke between us that every time we go somewhere that thankfully the sun is shining, but sometimes we'll go to a location like London, for example, or Scotland where it rains all the time and it's always sun shining for us. Yeah. And that's, kind of a problem sometimes when you're in places uh, that don't have air conditioning and the temperature gets up around 90 degrees or so. So that's just another reason for the sunshine travelers. So my travel history, growing up my parents were teachers and so we spent a good deal of time in the summers going on camping trips. We would both go to familiar places and new adventures every year. One place that we liked to go to a lot was the Blue Ridge Parkway near Asheville, North Carolina, and shorter trips to a lot of Georgia state parks. Uh, We would also go to the beaches in Florida, North Carolina, and South Carolina, and in North Carolina, like the Outer Banks, and we would have adventures like riding car ferries to get there, so a little bit of unusual travel adventures. As we got older, we would take longer road trips. One time we went several weeks going from Georgia to the coast of Maine and Acadia National Park and stopping at lots of sites along the way. But I had never been out of the country until after we got married. So my first international trip was with you to Germany to visit friends of your family that began as a student exchange with your brother. Yeah, and 30 years uh, or 30 something years later, I still try to visit our friends near Frankfurt when I'm there. In our daily lives, I have been working remotely for global companies for about eight to nine years now. I have employees all over the world, and so it's quite common for me to travel internationally as part of my work. About five years ago, our youngest son was old enough 
that he could stay at home with uh, some family members that lived just down the street. And Melissa started taking trips and traveling with me. At first, mostly in the U.S., but then eventually overseas travel as well. While I was working during the day, she would take small trips, exploring out by bus, train, Uber, and taking in all the sites that each location had to offer. One of the first trips I actually got to tag along with you was to Costa Rica. But on this first trip, we just stayed in San Juan, and I was able to go and see a few museums there that I think most people don't think about when they think about Costa Rica. I went to the Jade Museum, but I also spent one day at the spa. Um, You had never really done anything in Costa Rica except for go to the office and go to dinner. So thankfully, when local people take you, they usually took you somewhere with a view or to a nice local restaurant. So the next time that you went to Costa Rica for work, we actually went a few days early and rented a car and spent the weekend close to San Juan, but seeing the volcano and the national park and staying at an eco resort. Um, But when we got back into town for you to go to the office, we were able to hire a driver um, to take me from the hotel to ex- experience things like the zip line because that's not something that you enjoy anyway. And also he took me to a coffee plantation and a place for lunch. Yeah. One thing um, that will never end up on my bucket list is zip lining anywhere. So I also got to go to Las Vegas for the first time, tagging along on a work trip. You had been there several times before. Um, So since you were working and you hadn't really been able to experience the area before, that was really when I started figuring out how to research an area. Um, I usually go on to places like Pinterest and find people's blog posts, TripAdvisor, and using Google Maps. So just kind of getting good at doing that um, when when I got to a location and or before we went and just trying to figure out, okay, what am I going to do while you're at work? And those were things that I never really did for work. If I was doing any research, it was about the trip that I was taking and who I was meeting with and preparing for the work that I was going to be doing while there. wasn't really thinking about how to tour and sightsee. So I think that was a lot of fun for me, especially tagging along to places where you had been several times um, and staying over for a weekend at our own expense, of course, and taking you to places at that location that you had never seen, and even though you had been there several times. But I think we need to back up a little bit because way before this, we did take our kids on trips when they were younger for long weekends or for vacations, and we also tried to take one trip as a couple per year, just us, and then bigger ones on special anniversaries. So you want to talk a little bit about those trips? Yeah, at first we started out tent camping, um, We might go somewhere for a weekend locally, or even once we camped along the Blue Ridge Parkway from Roanoke, Virginia to down to Asheville, North Carolina. And that was neat because, you know, we got to, or we just basically loaded up the Jeep that we had at the time. Uh, We piled everything we could in the back seat along with our daughter who was in a car seat. And then we had a basket on the back where we could put stuff And then, you know, every night on that trip, we would uh, set up camp. And then the next morning, we'd take it down and go to the next location. And when you're doing that, especially on the Blue Ridge Parkway, like uh, we would stop maybe every couple of days and stay at a, I don't know, hotel or what are they called? Or even like a little cabin. Yeah, some kind of little cabin where we could uh, get a shower and things like that. We talked a little bit about that in episode one, creating a travel bucket list. So you can go back and listen to that if you haven't yet. And then later we bought a pull behind camper and took a week long trip to Kentucky. Uh, We went to the Corvette Museum. We went to Louisville, to the Louisville Slugger Museum and the Kentucky Derby. Um, I guess I should point out that we went to Churchill Downs. We didn't actually go to the Kentucky Derby. Um, but you know, those were all a lot of fun things that we did. And then, you know, we would mix in and take our kids to Disney and places like that, uh, as well. As the kids got older, we decided we wanted to go on some bigger trips with them. And then we were able to take them to places like Hawaii. We also went to Europe when our daughter graduated from high school, just trips like that, that we were able to work in. 
One thing that we are very passionate about is us as a couple and then encouraging other married couples to take trips together without their kids once a year at uh, the very least. And it doesn't have to be far, but just to reconnect and recharge and spend some time together. We've always been fortunate. Our kids stayed with family members, but um, I want to encourage you, like if you know somebody and a couple that needs to get away and you can help them out with their kids, um, just step in and do that if you can. And so some of the highlights of those were things like for our fifth anniversary, we did a long weekend to Charleston, South Carolina. Uh, we did a cruise to the Bahamas, um, our first one, I think your first one too, on our 10th anniversary. When we had our 15th anniversary, we actually went to Mexico for the first time. So a little bit about this trip, we actually stayed at an all-inclusive for the first time as well. And that was nice, but I think that we were both eager to see a little bit more of the area. We ended up booking a day trip um, out of the all-inclusive. We did some jet skiing and snorkeling and shopping and dining in Old Town Cancun. And then for our 20th anniversary, we took a trip to St. John and enjoyed the snorkeling and the beaches there. We really loved uh, St. John, and so we're anxious to return there in um, a few weeks. And in between those bigger years, we would just go away for the weekend. A lot of times in the fall, we might go to the mountains and enjoy the leaves. And there was a few times even I remember, like for my birthday, we might just go to Atlanta and attend something special and just stay in a hotel just to kind of get away from the everyday for a couple of days. And so then this brings us to the big trip that we were able to take that coincided with our 25th anniversary, a trip of our lifetime, really. And that was... Um, a trip that we took in between um, my last job and my current job. And so we're going to do a whole episode on this soon, but we spent six weeks traveling in Europe and we planned this trip in kind of the Aprilish time frame uh, to leave in early June. Um, the first 12 days was a Mediterranean cruise on Holland America. Then we went to Italy um, and we went down to the Amalfi Coast. We went to five of the Greek Cyclade Islands, back to Athens, and that's where we spent our anniversary. And then we finished up the trip in UK for a friend's wedding and spent some time in places like Bath and Cotswolds before returning home. But we'll dig into that in another episode. Um, but, you know, for now... Uh, our travels are really a mix often of business with pleasure. And then we have just pleasure trips like the Galapagos that we did recently. So if you go back to episode two, you can hear more about the uh, trip that we took to the Galapagos. And then we have an upcoming trip um, in a few weeks, as Melissa was just saying, where we're going to go to Puerto Rico and St. John. We're also currently starting the process to plan for a safari next year. Uh, another big uh, anniversary for us, a big birthday uh, for me next year. And so we're trying to fit that in. We're going to invite some friends to go with us, friends that we went to the Galapagos with. And, you know, we also have this goal where we want to visit a new country every year. That just allows us a lot of flexibility. We don't like to plan things way far in advance. And so that way, if something comes up and we want to, um, to do it, we can just jump right in and, and get started. Yes. And we've actually double clicked that one off for this year, going to Ecuador for the, well, for me, that was the first time in Ecuador for me. And then um, about two weeks ago, we were in Slovakia. And so we'll talk a little bit more about that really soon, because um, that was an interesting experience, a neat experience as well. Yeah, I had done Ecuador for work previously. I hate to just continuously refer you back to previous episodes. But, you know, we went to Quito um, and talked about that. And But I had never been there on a pleasure trip, so it was a great trip. So, Scott, where else have you been in the world that we have not talked about? Oh, well, that list, I think, is long. <laughs> but, you know, a few of them that come top of mind, the things that we haven't done together, right, is I've been to, the, to India, I've been to the Philippines, I've been to Hong Kong, uh, I've been to other South American city, uh, countries and cities. So, you know, there's quite a few places 
that I've been able to cross off from a travel list, but I wouldn't say that it's really a more than work for those locations. And I think for South America, you would like to go back to some of those places. Like I mentioned earlier, colleagues have taken you to dinner at some restaurants that had amazing views. And so you would like to go back to some of those cities or go to like Buenos Aires. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Buenos Aires is up there on the list of places where I want to take you. You know, funny enough, one of the things that stands out and top of mind for me for Buenos Aires is I want to take you and show you the cemetery there. Why is that? A cemetery? (laughs) Yeah, a cemetery. But, you know, it's the neatest thing because, and we'll we'll definitely hire someone to take us on a tour of the cemetery, which sounds weird, but uh, you really need someone who understands the history. But um, really, the reason it's so interesting is that, like, this is how families demonstrated their wealth. And so you would see crypts and mausoleums that had air conditioning in them. Oh, wow. Lights. Wow. (laughs) I don't think they had indoor plumbing, though. I think that might have been a step too far, but we'll see. We'll find somebody who really knows that and can take us through and show us uh, the cemetery there in Buenos Aires. So what would you say is your favorite place that you've ever visited? Oh, that's something that we did together. Um, one of my favorite places, and I know we'll be back there again, is Barcelona in Spain. Um, I love the architecture there. It's, of course, at the beach, which is always good for us and right up our alleys um, and terrific food there. Yes, absolutely. And the restaurants stay open late which we will dive into more in future episodes about eating, but that is a huge plus for us. Yeah, restaurants stay open late, um, but they also don't even open till late. And so, you know, some of the places where we've traveled before, like for example, if you go to the UK and outside of London, and we'll talk about this in an upcoming episode, you need to make sure that you eat early. Because while the pub may stay open, the kitchens close early. And uh, that's, that's resulted in a few hangry sessions for us uh, in the past. And um, you'll probably pick up on a little bit of that uh, on some of those stories as we go along with these, these podcast episodes. Um, moral of the story is you got to make sure when you're traveling with us, keep us well fed. Yes, absolutely. So one thing that we didn't really talk about when we talk about travel, because we talk about these different places that we go to, is that there are some places that we like to go on repeat because we enjoy the location. Yeah. So, you know, a couple that come to mind is Cancun, uh, Cabo, places like that. Yeah. So there's a particular place that we like to stay actually in town in Cancun, not an all-inclusive, but... We just find it neat because we've been there quite a few times and we recognize people at the restaurants or at the hotel. And so it almost feels like a home away from home a little bit. So that makes travel a little bit different and interesting. That's probably more of a relaxation travel. So you're not like constantly trying to do things. Yeah. And, but, you know, even in some of those locations like Cancun, um, you know, a few times we've rented a car and, you know, driven a little further down the coast and went and found some cenotes or, you know, just things like that that were uh, different than, you know, just staying at the resort there in Cancun. Um, I will say that when we travel to places like that, we tend not to stay in all-inclusives. And, you know, nothing against all-inclusives. There's some really good ones out there. I've probably got a few on my you know, bucket list of places that I want to go. But, you know, one of the things we like to do is to get out, experience the local culture and learn a little bit about the places. And if you're just sitting in the all-inclusive during the whole trip, you don't really get to experience the local culture. That's true. Absolutely. Anywhere else you can think of that we have been and experienced that we haven't mentioned? Well, Disney. Yes, Disney. I mean, we go to Disney three, four, five, ten times a year or something like that. 
Um, matter of fact, uh, Melissa and I have season passes, um, and we've had them now for a few years. Uh, we bought one for our granddaughter, um, and just recently our daughter was able to to get a season pass as they started selling them again. So you're going to hear a lot about Disney in our upcoming episodes. Um, but, you know, for some of you that are tuning in and listening, maybe that's what you want to hear about. Um, maybe you want to take, you know, your family or your grandkids or whatever on a trip. And we can definitely share a lot of information about that. Yes. And here in a few weeks, we're going to get to meet uh, our friend, one of our friends from the UK there and show him a little bit about Disney um, for a couple of days as well. Yeah. We're trying, we're thinking about seeing uh, if he would be interested in uh, jumping on the podcast uh, while he's here and really just talk about his experiences. He's bringing his family across from London and they're going to spend two weeks uh, in Orlando, they're going to do Disney and Universal, and Melissa's really been helping him um, plan some of that out. So maybe we'll get some feedback from him on, you know, hey, is someone who's coming over with kids and spending time there, like, you know, what's good, bad, you know, things that they would highly recommend, stuff like that. So one other trip that I wanted to mention is that a few years ago, we were able to go to Alaska with several family members, but we did it a little bit differently than most people do. Most people do like a cruise for the first time. And we had a few people on the trip that just couldn't do the ship. And so we did a road trip to several places in Alaska. And so that was just an interesting trip. And our son was able to join us on that trip as well. Yeah. So, you know, this is really who we are and where we've been so far, I would say we're probably just getting into the travel bug, right? Or we've had the travel bug for a while, but, you know, our extensive travels are really just getting started. And mainly because I look at our bucket list and it is so long. And so uh, we need to, to really get started on that, knock a bunch of those things off and uh, get you guys some more great content. Absolutely. One other place that we didn't mention, and we have an upcoming episode on it, is London. We've actually had the pleasure to be able to travel there several times in the past several years, some for pleasure, um, a lot of times for business. And so we have a lot of tips and tricks for London because for me, it's really one of my favorite places and I think it's just lots to do and see and then um, it's nice to be able to go back and have that familiarity as well so we're going to bring you a whole London tip episode yes Um, that's that's already ready to go we'll get that recorded as soon as possible we did just return from London earlier this week so all of that is fresh in mind and we can't wait to share it with you So now you know a little bit more about us as your host on this journey. We hope you enjoyed getting to know us on this episode and will find some inspiration for your next trip, or perhaps you heard something that you want to add to your bucket list. Most importantly, subscribe to our podcast, leave us a review, and share it with your friends to help them catch the travel bug. You never know, they may become your greatest travel companion.